So The Last of Us PC port has released various patches updating the game so it's, get this, playable. Ha, huh. go figure, a game that's playable. Now the last time I covered the game was on Shadow and I didn't recommend it at all, even on the power upgrade. Since then, there has been a number of performance updates. Now everyone's been talking about regular PC performance, but how does this relate with cloud machines? Now I'm not going to go into a crazy feature comparison here, but AirGPU has a wide variety of different machines, so we wanted to see how different things are with different configurations. I'll also retest this on the Shadow Power Upgrade. Let's get this party started. I was actually trying to make a video on The Last of Us on AirGPU when the game was released, but here's what happened. Things were so bad, I installed the game on both of the highest tiers. It took well over two hours on both machines. The download and the install of the games, plus the shader installation. This cost me over $10 on the platform before I even played the game. Then I made the mistake of shutting down the machines and guess what? Once I turned them back on the next day, I had to sit through the shader installation once again and I said So I told myself I would make this video after they made performance updates and here I am. Now for a little background with the updates from Naughty Dog. They have improved a lot but it's not super mind blowing changes. Yes, the performance is better. But please note that having high tiers on any of these platforms is still more preferred for this game because the changes lean heavily on CPU power, especially with scaling technologies like DLSS Active. So I'm going to be testing on the most optimal settings for each PC. I'm going to start with the Air GPU A10G, which will be equivalent to an RTX 3080. I will also jack up the virtual CPUs to 16 to really benefit. Also make sure to set the max frame rate off to get a higher frame rate than 60. And please, update the GPU drivers before you run the game. You'll have to install the shaders again after each driver update, so do this first. Now shaders took just over 15 minutes on this cloud PC build. And let me tell you, that is a huge improvement, but it's not optimal. 15 minutes is still crazy high versus any other game, even Modern Warfare. I'm going to immediately set the settings to Ultra, just to see if the 3080 can handle it. I'll also set DLSS to Performance. And yes, we finally get around 60 FPS on Ultra at 4K. Sorry, MSI Afterburner wasn't working for this machine for some odd reason. It will be going forward. If this tier wasn't so expensive, I would fully recommend this to everyone. Remember, since this is a CPU dominant game, you'll get very similar results at 1080p. I'll show you what I mean. Now for the next test, I'm going to use the A5000, which is a similar tier to the A10G. The A5000 is basically the workstation version of the A10G. Now the shaders on this one took just under 25 minutes. This is probably due to less CPU and less RAM on this tier. How much does this affect gameplay? Well, I have everything at the same settings. Ultra at 4K with DLSS at performance, and I get FPS in the 40s to low 50s just with the CPU and RAM lowered just a bit, 12 CPUs and 24 gigs of RAM, the FPS reduction is real. Now what about 1080p? We get very little FPS increase, if any at all. Since DLSS is utilized mostly by CPU, it can't do its job because the game is so CPU bound. So what about you shadow power upgrade users? Can you play the game well? The answer is, what do you define well? Can you play the game at all? Absolutely. Is it better? Yes. In what aspects? Well, shaders took about 35 minutes. That's like half the time than before. Second, no, you're not going to run ultra well on the power upgrade. Think medium settings. And I will put DLSS on performance. And check this out. FPS is really good. But look how resource intensive this game is. Both CPU and GPU are at 100%. This game does not mess around. But at least we're at a point where the power upgrade can play the game and pretty well. Now here's another thing. Upgrading to the power upgrade plus is going to be required for newer games. Why? Check out the stream even though the FPS is high. I'm getting a stream FPS in the low 30s. Unbelievable. I do believe this is where the additional RAM comes in. It helps the stream with more frames. This really isn't a shadow problem, it's a streaming problem. 
This also happens to me on Moonlight when I'm running in 4K on a machine with 16 gigs of RAM. I'll make another video on this topic alone once I get upgraded. So finally, I made a super PC on TensorDoc with the A6000, 32 CPUs, and 64 gigs of RAM. Now the good thing about this comparison is that the shaders were done in just over 5 minutes. It was so fast in comparison, I let Left Behind finish the shaders as well. Both finished much faster than any other cloud PC, but this is where the good things end. I'm running Ultra with DLSS set to performance once again, and you would have thought that this would have blown the FPS to epic proportions, but no. Bottleneck City. Can you believe you can have a PC that is too strong to run this game correctly? It was so bogged down that it ended up being too much for Parsec to stream. So this is where we are. Sure they've made improvements, but right now, it's only good enough so more higher end PCs can run it. This is why we haven't seen it on Boostroid yet. Now it is on Nware, but the game crashes immediately on loading it. Go figure. I can't seem to run the game on Vulture either, don't know why. Joyarc has the game ready to go on their platform, so I'll check this out. Look for that video soon, if it works. Now if you're looking to get details on all the platforms I've covered on the game, feel free to check out the description for discount codes and links. So if you like this overview of the Last of Us update on various cloud platforms, give us a like. Also make sure to join as a member of the channel or join our Patreon in the links below. And above all else, make sure to subscribe to keep it locked right here at the only place where you can do battle in gaming heaven, Cloud Gaming Battle.